Can a sequence be broken? Let's find out. Sequences. Most of us know what sequences are. They give us that nice, contiguous, or at least continuous, unique set of numbers. They just spiral off. They're incredibly scalable, very, very fast. The perfect thing for unique surrogate keys. But we need to be a little bit careful. Can a sequence be broken? Let's find out. This is the question that came in. We are unpivoting some data and we are getting duplicate key violations even though we're using a sequence. Surely when you grab a sequence, you're never gonna get a duplicate value. What is happening? And we responded initially saying, well, maybe you have some existing data, maybe the sequence needs to be reset to a higher value. And we worked, worked through the normal things that might cause a duplicate with a sequence, but we removed all of them. It came down to use of sequences in a multi-table insert. Now, if you're unfamiliar with multi-table inserts, they came in back in Oracle 9 and they look at something a little along the lines of this. You have a source data, a select statement that comes at the bottom of the statement. And rather than just having to insert into a single table, what you can do is you can insert into multiple tables. They can be different tables, they can be the same table, and you can use the insert all, which means every row that comes out of the source will go into all of those target objects, target tables. And it's quite flexible. You can add conditions to each of the various potential uh, targets. So based on various conditions, you can choose whether you're going to insert into a first table, second table, et cetera. And you can even change the insert all to be insert all or insert first. So I'm either going to apply all those conditions or the moment I get to one successful condition, that's the first, that's the winner, so to speak. And the others are a bypass. So a nice, powerful facility. Let's do a demo with sequences and how they work when we come to multi-table inserts. And that will explain why this person thought sequences were broken. I've got this table called contacts. They had customer details. I've, I've invented some source data. We have some contacts. And as we can see from the columns, we have the usual details about a contact. But what we have is various columns for contact details in terms of uh, their phone numbers. So if we have a quick look, we can see it says, you know, the first one we got Donald O'Connell. He's got a phone number. That's presumably his work phone number. He's got an emergency contact number. He's got a mobile phone number. He's got a home phone number, etc. As we've had different phone numbers come along, they've added columns on this existing system to handle those various kinds of phone numbers. What if we wanted to, as they said, unpivot it? Typically, if you fire up your phone, like you grab your Android phone or something, if you add a contact that says, you know, what kind of phone number do you want to add? And it lets you add as many as you want, because you could have five mobile numbers, you could have three home numbers, etc. You have lots of different contacts and you see simply keep adding them. In the same way in a database, we would like to add them as rows. So to pivot those four columns into rows, we could do it this way in terms of when we're populating our new table. We could go get our work phone number. I got a thing called the contact type there on line five and we'll select the phone number column. And then I'll do a union all and I'll get the mobile column and call it the mobile contact type. And then we have the emergency contact type and so forth. And what we have there is that will give us now four rows for each employee. If I scroll that back a bit, you can see now we've effectively changed the columns into rows for Stephen King. He's got an emergency, a home, a work number, et cetera, et cetera. That's a fairly common technique. So if I'm going to populate a new table that looks like this structure, I'll create my new contacts table. It's going to have the employee ideas before, but because that's about to be repeated, I'm going to introduce a new column called the contact primary key, contact PK, and that's going to be populated with my sequence. I've also got the column called the contact type, which will be work, home, emergency, etc. I'll add a primary key as I would add a primary key constraint. I'll create a sequence in which I'd like to actually populate that column. And here's where I take advantage of insert all. To avoid the union all query, which requires four passes through the table, I can use insert all, one pass through the table and then four uh, conditional inserts. And of course, this case, the condition is true in all cases to put four rows into the new contact table for every row on my contact. And because I got a sequence as a primary key, I have sequence.nextval as the first column. I run that and things look a bit strange because I get a unique violation on an empty table on the sequence column. 
and sequence.nextval is meant to give me a different sequence every single time. That's a bit odd. Let's drop the constraint and run the population through so we can see what the data is, so we can see why we're getting duplicate errors. I'll run that insert through. I got the correct number of rows. There were 10 rows to start with. Now I've got 40. I've multiplied by four. Here's what happens when I look at the contact sequence number. You can see that what happens is the way multi-table insert works is for each source row that we grab from the contact table or the source table, that results in one uh, invocation of sequence.nextval. And that will be used for all entries in the insert. So even though we saw in the insert statement, we saw insert sequence.nextval, sequence.nextval, sequence.nextval four times, that's actually not when it's evaluated. The database simply says, oh, I see a nextval reference for each row that comes out of the source, that's when I'm going to increment sequence.nextval. And that's why we got duplicates. We actually got four copies of each sequence number for each row. To avoid that, what are some of the resolutions we could do? Well, rather than using insert all, I could do the, the heavy lifting of unpivoting those rows using an unpivot statement. So in this case, once again, still only a single pass through the source table, but now I'm using the unpivot clause to take those four columns and turn them into four rows. So if I run that, I get the same data I want. You can see it looks like the four rows once for each of the columns, but having done that now, I can actually just wrap that into a standard insert. So I'll truncate my table. I'll put the primary key back on just to make sure that we actually aren't, we aren't going to get uh, duplicates. And now I'll just do an insert with my standard unpivot select. Because it's now just an insert select, not an insert all, the select statement will return a sequence.nextval invocation for each row and all the rows go in. There are other ways I could do it too. Let's truncate my table again. This is obviously a simple example because I could easily convert my query into an unpivot. That's not always necessarily the case. The way I can solve this problem if I must use an insert all is because the sequence number is incremented by one normally for each source row, what I can do is modify the sequence definition to jump up by 10 every time I request an XFAL. Now I need to change my insert all being aware that it's going to jump up by 10. So now it will jump up by 10 every time I get a contact. What happens here is for the first insert, I'll put sequence.nextval. That'll be sequence value of one. Then the next one will be sequence nextval plus one. That will be two. Sequence nextval plus two, that'll be three. Nextval plus three, that will be four. I've only got four targets here. So as long as I increment by four or more, then the next sequence value will be jumping up enough to actually bypass the duplicates. This is a common technique when you have insert all. Why do they choose increment by 10? I'm assuming I'll never have more than 10 targets here for my insert all statement. If I had 20, I'd increment by 20 or 30 or whatever. Let's remember, sequences always have gaps anyway, so we don't really care if it jumps up by 10, even though we've only got four targets. So I run that and we can actually see what happens. It was, it started at 70 because I'd already used the first six. I inserted one, two, and three, sequence next valve plus one, plus two, plus three, and then it jumped up to 80. It incremented by 10 for the next row. So there's some techniques. If it's a simple unpivot, you can just do an unpivot command. Otherwise, you can have the sequence jump by certain increments such that you can cater for the various when statements in there.